You are welcome to Married Christian Podcast. My name is Olushegun Mukulu, and in this episode, I am sharing on the spiritual husband and wife. A husband that is spiritual, a wife that is also spiritual. Being spiritual is not something to be afraid of. It's not something that belongs to to some first-class Christians. To be spiritual is simply to be born again. To be spiritual is simply to live by the Word of God. Once you are born again, you are spiritual. Uh, In fact, there is nothing like too spiritual. You know, I hear people say something like, you are being too spiritual. Those things, statements are not correct. You are either spiritual or you are not spiritual. You are either a spirit or you are a human being. There's nothing like being too much of a spirit or being too much of a human being. It's the same thing. You are either spiritual or you are not spiritual. There's nothing like being too much spiritual. But what does a spiritual husband look like? And I'm talking, I'm not talking about spirit husband. I'm talking about spiritual husband. By the way, there is nothing like spirit husband. There are demons that operate in people's life. And in order for those demons not to be cast out, they have confused people by presenting themselves as spirit husband. When somebody says someone has a spirit husband, it doesn't ring an alarm. But when you are told that you have a demon in your life, then you know that this is a serious issue. So there's nothing like spirit husband. There are just demons. But once you come to Christ, all of that is dealt with. But today we are looking at the spiritual man and the spiritual woman, the spiritual husband and the spiritual wife. And we will take our text from Genesis chapter 25 and look at uh, verse 19 to 23. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac. Verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to, to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Now, in Genesis chapter 24, the Lord had guided Isaac to marry Rebekah. Abraham's servant had gone on a journey, and clearly God was with them on that journey. And they found Rebekah, and they brought Rebekah to Isaac. So Rebekah was the appointed woman for Isaac. Rebekah was the will of God for Isaac. Marrying Rebekah was the right decision. But as you will soon see, being in the will of God does not mean that there will not be challenges in marriage. The fact that you are having challenges in your marriage does not mean that God has not led you to that marriage. So you see, Rebekah was barren. How can God lead a man to a woman? As in clearly, the marriage of Isaac and Rebekah was an act of the Lord. But in Genesis 25-21, we are reading that Rebekah was barren. Now, but how did the spiritual husband handle such an issue? Today, I see many women getting exposed to satanic false and wicked prophet, pastors, preachers all over the place because they are in search to have a baby, because they want to have a baby. You know, some will go to all kinds of places. They will ask them to sow seeds. Some will make vows. And please, may I say that as Christians, we don't make vow. Jesus has nullified anything that has to do with vow. God doesn't answer our prayer because we vow to do something. We have become children of God. We are different from the nation of Israel. They were not God's children because they were not born again. 
You are born again. You are a child of God. The DNA of God is inside of you. So you don't need any vow for your father to do to you what your father must do for you. So you must understand that. But my point is that many women, because of looking for a child or because of a challenge in their life, are going about seeking for prayer contractors, seeking for help where there is no help, and getting exposed to all these deceitful people that are out there today. But you see that as far as Isaac was concerned, he stood in the gap. The scripture says in verse 21, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. As a man, as a spiritual man, you must be there for your wife spiritually. You must be the priest of that home. You must be the intercessor of that home. Your wife should not be running here and scatter, looking for one night vigil to attend, looking for one prayer mountain to attend, looking for one camp to attend because of a problem in the home. It just simply shows that the man is a failure. As a man, you must stand as the priest in the home. You must lay hold of, of, of God in your marriage. You must call upon the name of the Lord. It is not the, the woman who should be running around. If it were today and a woman is looking for a baby, she will be the one running around. And that is how she, she gets into all kinds of trouble and make all kinds of mistakes. I've seen situations where a woman was looking for a child and, and this, this, this fake man of God said well, he had to sleep with the woman. And he was sleeping with the woman and he actually filmed, they filmed that sexual act and even put it on online. It could be that bad. It could be that bad. Why? Because there was no man to stand in the gap. As a spiritual husband, you must stand in the gap. You see, when they say you are the head of the family, it is not for you to cross your leg and be, and be lazy in the house. To be the head of the family is to give direction, vision, is to hear, is to pray. You see, the mouth is in the head. The ears in the, is in the head. The eyes is in the head. All of this you must represent to that woman. You must protect your wife. You must protect your children in the place of prayer. You must be the priest that stands in the place of prayer for them. The wife of the spiritual man should not be going here and there looking for prayer contractors. She should not be seeking solution anywhere. As the priest, you must stand in the gap. Is she having health challenges? Then you must stand in the gap for her. You must be the one that intercede and stand and say, Lord, my wife is having this challenge and I'm standing on your word that this or that will be done according to your word in her life. That is how a spiritual man operates. He shields the family. He protects the family. He is the priest of the family. He is the teacher of the family. He is the pastor of the family. He is the one that brings the word of God to the family. So a spiritual man operates like this. So you can imagine the blessing that Rebecca doesn't have to run here and there. All she had to do was just to continue what she was to do in the home. And then the Lord had this man and Rebekah became pregnant. The Bible didn't say God had Rebekah. You know, it was not like the case with Anna. Anna didn't have a husband who could stand in the gap. And this woman had to be going every year looking for a place to pray. But for Rebekah, she doesn't have to be going to Shiloh to pray. Because she had a husband who could stand in the gap, who could talk with the Lord, who could relate with God. That's what it means to be the head. That's what it means to be the man. That's what it takes to be a spiritual man in the home. You must learn to stand in the gap for your family as a man. The Lord said, I seek for a man who will stand in the gap. That's what the, that's what the Lord is looking for. It's not for you to just keep saying everywhere, I am the head, I am the head, I am the head. As if anybody is contending headship with you. But you must demonstrate your headship by leadership. By demonstrating proper spiritual life. 
Your wife must see that there is a priest in the home. Your children must know that there is a priest in the home. When your children have issues, you should be the one who calls them together and say, don't worry, we are serving a living God. And I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord and you will see that the Lord God that we serve will intervene in this situation. That's how you help your children to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and to also want to follow him. Because they see how daddy is standing in the gap and how the Lord is intervening in the family as a result of daddy standing in the gap. So Isaac entreated the Lord because his wife was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. That's a spiritual man. That's a real spiritual man. But when we now read further in verse 22, the scripture says, And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Can you imagine? A woman is pregnant, you know, and she has something moving in her womb. I thought the next thing to do was to see a doctor and see maybe and probably do a scan, you know, but the scripture says she went to inquire of the Lord. I thought she was going to go to her husband and lie down and say, honey, just, just rub my stomach. I'm feeling so much. You know the way you crave as a woman for the attention affection of your husband some of you don't know that it is not right remember in genesis when the lord placed curse on the woman and on the land he said that your affection your desire shall be towards the man and he shall rule over thee that wasn't the way she was created that was the result of sin you are not to be desiring to be craving for the love and attention of your husband you must crave for the attention of Jesus. I am not saying by this that your husband should not give you attention or should not be caring. You would think that this woman was going to relax and begin to disturb Isaac. Did you know what she did? She inquired also of the Lord. That's a spiritual woman. She also knows how to ask things from the Lord. You see the man, the man knew his own role. He stood in the gap and this woman conceived. And when she had something, she talked to it about God. Some of you are fighting your husband when you should be talking to God. I remember sharing with a sister who told me that her husband had chosen a school for their, for their, for their son. And she wasn't comfortable with that school. And I told her, I said, he's your head, don't worry. You go and pray about it. And ask the Lord to convince him that there is a better school, that this school may not be good for the child. And then she did that. And within some weeks, uh, the husband too felt that the school he had decided the child was going to go was not good enough. Learn to talk to God as a woman. But rather than talk to God, you are just picking fight. You are picking fight in the home. You do not know how to communicate with your husband. Learn to communicate with your, with your husband through God. Learn to first take matters before the Lord. It may look trivial, it may look ordinary, as in, just imagine, just, just the movement of baby in the womb of a woman. And she felt that she should, what, what was her own response? The Bible says, and she went to inquire of the Lord. She went to ask the Lord, Lord, what is going on? You need to check, are there issues in your home? You need to go and ask the Lord, Lord, what is going on in my home? What is happening in this marriage? What will I do now, Lord? Why are we going through this? Why do we have this storm? You must learn to speak to the Lord. And in verse 23 of this Genesis 25, the scripture says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Can you imagine? That was the... That was how Rebecca got the revelation that two nations were going to burn through her. You see, it's always good. an ordinary event in her body had turned to a prophetic event for generations to come. Why? Because she took up the matter with the Lord. She would not have known this. Let me say something to you. There are things you won't know until you ask God. The Bible says that it is the honor 
of the Lord to keep a matter, but the honor of kings to search out the matter. It is our own honor to search out matters. If you don't inquire at the mouth of the Lord, if you don't speak to the Lord, some things will just remain in your marriage and they will not be resolved. You must take those matters before the Lord. You must ask the Lord. And I can assure you, God will speak to you. Because you see, in verse 20, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto her, If God will reply, Rebecca, do you think God will not reply you? As a spiritual woman, you must learn to talk to God and learn to hear from the Lord. You are not just a woman so that you can, you can ha- because you know how to have great sex on the bed, or because you know how to cook uh, good food. I'm not saying anything is wrong with any of that. But the first thing is, that is your relationship with God. The first thing is your relationship with Jesus. It does not matter how good you cook in the house, how you clean the house, how great a wife you are. If your relationship with Jesus is not top-notch, then at the end of the day, you are nothing. A true spiritual woman is a woman that has fellowship with Jesus. It's a woman that knows how to inquire at the mouth of the Lord. It's a woman that knows how to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Her spirit, her ears are tuned to the Spirit of the Lord. She understands what is going on beyond the ordinary. So you see, Rebecca had an understanding deeper than her situation. For other people, all they see is a woman pregnant. But for Rebecca, she understood that there's something greater that she's carrying. And you know, when you know you carry the vision of God inside of you, the way you behave is different. And that was why later on in the future, she tried to hijack in her own way the blessing of Isaac for Jacob because she knew that was the word of God. What gave Rebecca boldness to take that step was because she had revelation. As a woman, when you are with revelation, when you are armed with revelation, you, you act differently. The situations that makes people to be afraid, that makes people to be scared, does not scare you. You face those situations, you deal with them because you are armed with revelation. You are armed with the knowledge of the word of God. You must be furnished with the word of God. If you want to hear God, the first thing in hearing God is listening to him. Now, how do you listen to God? By reading his word. Do you know what, what we do when we read the word of God? Is We are actually listening to him. It's like if, I, if I'm reading scripture to you, what do you do? You listen. It's the same thing. When you also read it yourself, you listen. So you must be thoroughly furnished. That's what makes you a spiritual woman. That you are thoroughly furnished with the word of God. It doesn't matter what you know. It doesn't matter what success you think you can achieve in this life. If you are not thoroughly furnished with the word of God, you are nothing. You must be thoroughly furnished. That is what you need to run your marriage. I'm telling you, these are the things that you need to run your home. That you need to run your marriage. So you see, Rebecca, she became relaxed. She was no longer troubled. Other may be saying, but why is your stomach moving? She said, don't worry. I carry vision. I carry the grace of God. I carry great future. Some of you don't know that the shakings in your marriage is actually for good. But you don't have a revelation. You are agitated. You are discussing with people you should not be discussing with. Rebecca could have gone to her friend and begin to talk. I say, I don't know, come and see my stomach. Oh. But the Bible says she went to inquire of the Lord. Who is your first point of call? I'm not saying you don't need counsel. I'm not saying you cannot receive counsel from people. You can. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You can. But let God be your first point of call. Always go before the Lord. Many of the matters you are dragging with your husband, if you just go on your nail and discuss those matters with God, you will be shocked how God works in the heart of a man. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. 
and as a river, he turns it whithersoever he wishes. You see, God can God turns the heart of men. It's so easy for God to turn the heart of your husband. And you can effect you can effect that turning in the place of prayer. The things that argument and fight cannot achieve for you. I will I want to tell you that prayer will achieve far much more than that for you. The things that your gossip about your husband, your hatred for your husband, your malice for your husband, the things they can't achieve for you, your prayer will achieve it for you. Go and inquire at the mouth of the Lord. This is how spiritual men and women, this is how they operate. They are guided by God. They know how to call upon the name of God. They know how to fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They put Jesus at the forefront of their life. Are you a spiritual husband? Are you a spiritual wife? Are you truly spiritual? Are you running your home with the, with the grace of the kingdom of God or with the wisdom of this world? A wise woman, the scripture says, build her own home. But the foolish one, he says with her own hand, she tears it down. A spiritual man also is the same thing. Build his own family. And the foolish ones, they also tear it down with their own actions, with their own behavior. It amazing the behavior of some men. They are literally destroying their own life with their own hands. You come back late at night, you, you might treat your wife, you flirt with other women. Some even go as far as committing adultery. You are destroying your own marriage. You are destroying your own life. You drink and you come back late. Involve yourself in all manner of things. You have no respect for your wife. You have no understanding of your marriage. You frustrate her. You might treat her. You are destroying your life. You are destroying your own life. Your own marriage. With your own hand. Don't be a foolish husband. Be a spiritual husband. And God will give you grace and wisdom. In the name of Jesus. My name once again is Olushia Gumoku Olu. We send this podcast out regularly. But in case somebody had forwarded it to you and you also and your spouse, you want to be receiving it. All you need to do is to save our number on WhatsApp and message us telling us your full name and your interest to join the married podcast. Please, it is very important that you let us know your full name and marital status. Don't send your numbers to us. Add our number on WhatsApp and then send us a message with your full name and your marital status. Let us know you are married. We will add you to the married podcast list because we also have uh, another podcast for singles and another one for growing in Christ and then uh, one for school of ministry. So please be very specific when you write so that we add you to the right list. Now, the number for which to write us is plus two, three, four. 818-615-7884. Now, for those of you who are watching this on on the YouTube, please remember to subscribe to this channel and particularly to share this message with other Christian couples so that we can all together raise Christ-centered homes. And for those listening on WhatsApp as a podcast, remember to share also this audio file. We have a free marriage course for married people. If you are married and you want to understand marriage better, how to make your marriage work, how to be a true spiritual husband or wife, you can enroll for our free marriage course. It's completely free from beginning to the end and it is done via email. All you need to do is to send us an email and the email address is BibleLoveHelper at gmail.com. Bible Love Helper is one word. Bible Love Helper at gmail.com. For those of you watching on YouTube, the email address will be in the description below. Now, when you write us, let us know that you are married so that we send you the married form because we have another course for single people. It will greatly enhance your marriage, it will greatly help you, and it is completely free. Until next time, when we bring the word of God, our prayer is that God will keep your marriage and fill you with wisdom to make your marriage one that thrives and advance the kingdom of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen.